So the FNAF movie has released on Peacock and in cinemas and in this video we're going to go through all the things you may have missed inside of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So with that said and done, grab a nice drink, grab some snacks and let's get straight into the video. The first reference today is the Sparky's Restaurant reference, where the restaurant where Matt Pat serves the customers is called Sparky's, which is a direct reference to Sparky the Dog, which was a popular fan-made animatronic back when FNAF 1 first released. Another time we see Sparky the Dog is in the parts and service room, where Max sees the dog animatronic, and to the left of Sparky, you can also see Shadow Freddy, who sits in the left side of the screen. During MatPat's cameo, he explains how lunch is the most important meal of the day, and then he drops It's Just a Theory, which is a direct reference to MatPat's YouTube channel Game Theory and Film Theory. At the start of the movie, during the section where Mike is in the mall, you can actually see to the left of Mike, you can see a rainbow with googly eyes and a smiley face. This is a direct reference to Chica's Magic Rainbow from FNAF World. During the film, you can actually see BB toys spread across the pizzeria. This is usually accompanied by a jump scare and this happens multiple times throughout the course of the film, but if we take this a step further, this could be saying that BB will be in the second film, which will be during the course of the FNAF 2 events. Another thing this could be is a troll, as in the games, BB is a troll for the player and can deactivate your light. So in the movie, it's kind of reverse where BB is actually the one giving jump scares. At the start of the film, we see a dream theory book. This dream theory is actually a popular theory during the events of the FNAF games, where it is speculated that the events of the games is all a dream. In the movie, the dream theory is most likely targeted at Mike. This is a main plot of the film, where Mike tries to relive the memory of his younger brother Garrett being kidnapped. In Steve Raglan's office, you can see on the desk there is a lucky rabbit foot. This is in direct correlation with Steve Raglan's character, William Afton, who is mostly seen in a yellow bunny suit. It just seems William really likes bunnies. When Carl is in the kitchen, you can actually see a glimpse of Chica walking in the background. This is very faint and a lot of people actually missed this in the theater, including myself. But after re-watching it, you can actually see Chica starting to walk toward the kitchen, which is really cool. When Mike is speaking to the counselor, you can see on the blackboard, there's actually a bunch of references to characters in the movie. The spelling words say bunny, which is a reference to Bonnie. It also says fox and chick, which is foxy and chica. You also see bear, which is a reference to Freddy. But the interesting part is there's also a character called the puppet, which in the games, the puppet is a main character who gives life to the animatronics and is seen in the second game. So this could be leading to the fact that the puppet will be in the second film. During the section where Steve is giving Mike information about the pizzeria, he ends his line in saying, catch you on the flip side. This is a reference to Phone Guy in the original game, where at the end of his call, he says this. Uh, okay, I'll leave you on the flip side. When Vanessa is showing Mike the animatronics for the first time, the animatronics perform a song which is called Talking in Your Sleep. During the performance of the song, Freddy looks directly at Mike. This is a cool detail. As Mike is sleeping, he sees the spirits of the animatronics and, in this scene, you can see the animatronics are already onto Mike. During the scene where the group of people break into the pizzeria, one of these people named Carl has a shirt which is clearly a reference to the Midnight Motorist game from Pizzeria Simulator. Another reference to Pizzeria Simulator is when Vanessa says that's called criminal negligence. This is a direct reference to the blacklisted ending in FNAF 6, where the voiceover says, you were reckless and borderline criminally negligent. When Mike puts the tape in for the first time, on the tape, if you look closely, you can see a very faint name. This name reads, Fritz. 
Fritz is a character from the second game. However, in this case, Fritz or Fliss Gerald in the games may have been a prior night guard which worked the night shift at Freddy's. As the group of people break into the pizzeria, on the cams, if you look closely in the corner, you can see a endoskeleton. This same endo can be found beside Sparky during the parts and service scene with Max. Another reference to the games is that all the animatronics kills are directly the way they move in the games. For example, Bonnie's kill is in the parts and service and in the games, Bonnie always moves to the parts and service. For Chica, it's the kitchen where she kills Carl. And for Foxy, it's the hallway where Foxy kills the first night guard at Freddy's. As Mike and Vanessa are in the back room, you can see an animatronic in the corner, which Mike points out. A lot of people, including myself, call this circus baby. However, this animatronic is not Circus Baby and is in fact a animatronic called Ella who is from the FNAF books. During the opening intro of the movie, you can see the events of how William stuffed the kids in the suit. As William is taking off the suit, you can see he is resembled as purple, which is a direct reference to the games as William Afton is the purple guy. In the scene where Vanessa is unveiling the truth about William Afton, she hands Mike a picture of her with her dad when she was a child. She is holding a plane, which is the same plane Garrett had when he got kidnapped. So, this means William must have given his child, Vanessa, the same plane that he took from Garrett. And this is extremely messed up, but it accurately depicts how William acts in the games. In MatPat's most recent video, he explains how Markiplier originally was meant to be in the movie. By now, you have probably heard the reason Markiplier wasn't in the FNAF movie. It's because he was working on his own movie called Iron Lung. A interesting topic Matt Pat went over is in the original script, Markiplier was actually meant to be the first night guard in the opening of the movie who got jump scared by Foxy. And this would have had Markiplier saying some of his famous lines from his first ever FNAF YouTube video, on his channel, which is insane. During that scene where William is getting springlocked by the animatronic, he says the line, I always come back. For those not familiar with the games, this is actually a very famous William Afton quote, which he says often during the games. I always come back. For those that are wondering why William would say this, it's actually because he knows more than anyone how the animatronics work and how when you get spring locked or when you get stuffed in a suit, you actually possess the animatronic. So he knows for sure he will eventually come back in the form of Springtrap. In the ending credits of the film, you hear a familiar song. This is the Living Tombstones FNAF 1 song. This was a very popular FNAF song, which pretty much broke YouTube back in 2014. If you listen closely at the very end during the mid credit scene, you actually hear the puppet's lullaby. This is exactly like how it is in the game, and this perfectly sets up the puppet for the second movie. At the end of the end credits, you can hear a very Atari-like voice saying the following line. It says, come find me in a very cryptic message. This exact voice can be found in the second FNAF game during the 8-bit levels. And lastly, after Mike wakes up from his nightmare, the whole pizzeria starts to activate and on the wall we see the infamous line, It's me. If you're not aware on what this means, in the games, It's me is a very common line the animatronics will say to the security guard. So that's about it for today's video. If you guys have enjoyed, then please do consider smashing a like. And if you are new around here, we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So if you want to help out, smash the subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy and goodbye.